Hello, welcome to Life Talk. I'm Mark Crutcher, and I'm joined by my trusty sidekick, Renee Hobbs. Hello, Renee. Hello. Unfortunately, this week, uh, Carol was still not able to be with us because of the, the issues with her mother. She's having to take care of her. You know, we keep talking about this as a, as a consistent theme now, that the pro-aborts don't want to engage the pro-lifers in debate or discussion about abortion. They just want to shut us up. Mm -hmm. In Toronto, a raging pro-abort named Liz Phillips found out that a local pro-life group in Canada had pro-life material sent to people's houses. Right. And no. she didn't like it. No. It so offended her. It offended her, mm -hmm. she said. So she went down the street going through people's mailboxes and mm -hmm. pulling it out. Right. She and another woman. And it's not against the law because the address is not mailed to that specific person. It's, not, it's, not, it's mailed to the address, not to a person. Right. Which, that's the law in Canada. If she did this in the United States, it would mm -hmm. be a felony. Yeah. But this woman lied through her teeth. She said she identified herself as pro-choice, but mm -hmm. said the issue really wasn't abortion. It's just she, she didn't like this obscene material, mm -hmm. as she called it, right. in other people's uh, mailboxes. Right. She said, I'm pro-choice, so I don't like the messaging itself. But that my main concern was the graphic nature of the brochures. Right. She's lying through her teeth. Right. And I wish this had, had occurred in the United States because she'd be maybe going to jail right now. Which well, I mean, just even taking it off at the, uh, out of the mailboxes of the other people, she has now stopped what could have been a good thing. And, right. and people realize what abortion is. It's images, and you have to explain it to your children and anybody else that sees it. And she... These people always talk about they support people's right to choose. Right. Well, what about, what if somebody wanted that material? Right. Exa that's what I'm saying. Yes. Right. Yeah, she has just now... Took that choice away from Took it. the choice away. Right. Or even if they say, I don't want it, but I don't want you going through my mailbox. Right. I get stuff in my mail every day, and I bet you do too, mm -hmm. that I don't want, and I just look at it and throw it away. And if somebody were going through my mail... I'd be hot. I would be hot. Right. And like I said, she ought to be in jail. Uh, unfortunately, Canada's laws apparently don't don't allow for that, but she ought to be in jail. Yeah. Uh, speaking of going to jail, the ACLU, they opposed a bill, as did the abortion industry, that's now been signed in law in Michigan against uh, people who force someone else to have an abortion. And you and I both know this is extremely common. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to the report that you mentioned earlier, that under the radar violence and the conflict over abortion that right. you and I did, right. that's what that was all about. Mm -hmm. well, in the report that we did, it only deals with the women who were murdered, right. and it didn't even deal with all of them. It's only the ones that we found, and we didn't even use all of the ones we found. No, we didn't. But in addition to that, it didn't include the much larger numbers of women who are just beat up or put in a nursing home or put in a permanent vegetative state mm -hmm. or, or that acquiesce to it out of fear. Right. Yeah, and I read an article yesterday that 64% of the women that actually go and have an abortion are pressured, coerced, right. forced to have one. 64%. And, and when you and I talk to these women over the phone who've, ha who've been injured or mm -hmm. now regret their abortion, mm -hmm. we see this, again, a common theme. Yes, it is. And they'll say, I didn't really want to do this, but my husband, my parents, my right. boyfriend, yeah. boyfriend, uh, my boyfriend's mother is a, is a big culprit here. Yes, sir. They know they can get away with this stuff, with taking these kind of positions, because the media will not call them on it. Right. It is an obscenity what's right. going on here. But um, they get away with it. Yep, they cover it up. They don't want, like we, like we said, they don't want people to know what actually goes on inside the abortion clinic. Listen to this. Marissa Kovich, field director for the ACLU of Michigan, said that they opposed the legislation because the penalties were excessive on the, on the primarily men, but not always, but primarily men mm -hmm. who would force a woman into having an abortion. They said the penalties were excessive. Mm-hmm. The penalties were between five thousand and ten thousand dollars. Right. Now, if that's all it costs to kill a life, <laughs> shouldn't it be more? Well, and or force someone else to take the or, life. Right. Let's say you take a woman, which we've talked to here, and we saw in the in the report. People just need to go read that report and see what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. These are real world cases that we fully documented with a, with police reports and so forth. Mm -hmm. If you take a woman who believes that abortion is murder, and she's carrying her baby, and you force her. Mm -hmm. to murder her baby against her will mm -hmm. at the point of a gun or with a knife at her throat, which is, mm -hmm. that sounds like an, an exaggeration, but it's, it's not. not. It's not. If you force her to do that and you're telling me that the fine for that is five to $10,000 and that's excessive? Right. What you've done to this woman is if for $5,000 to $10,000 is too excessive? Right. That she's going to have to live with for the rest of her life? 
How do you even begin to dialogue with someone who is so intrinsically evil and so completely sold out to the abortion lobby that she would make that sort of statement? It's obscene. She would need to come here and follow us for about a year or so. Follow us for about a month. Take yeah. some of the phone calls that we get. That's right. Right? Yeah. Because the fact is, Renee, even you had a different opinion about that than you have now. After just a few months, well, mm -hmm. of course, you've been here years now, but even just after a few months mm -hmm. of taking those phone calls, you had seen a completely different side of this issue right. than, yeah. what you, than what you knew about when you first came yeah. here. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Pretty tough. Now, we go from people like this Marissa Kovic, who's just basically evil, and some of these other people may be evil, but I, we always talk, I always talk about how a lot of these people are just completely whacked out. I mean, they're nuts. <laughs> and they are. Okay. <laughs> Being pro-choice pro is a mental illness. I don't care what anybody says. It is. Okay. A woman named Stosh Kotler, who's Jewish, she had an abortion. This article that I read about her, she goes into all this nonsense about um, about the spirituality of the baby and, and, and all this stuff that she's killing. Mm -hmm. She said there was a mismatch between the frameworks of those who identify as pro-choice to talk about pregnancy and the experience I was having. In other words, she's saying all the lit rhetoric that I was hearing and I've always heard and repeated from the pro-choice side didn't mm -hmm. match the framework mm -hmm. of what she was experiencing with this pregnancy. And she said, we all knew that we can't use language like the baby and we can't say, the, talk about the baby and because the, the religious right has used the babe, words like the baby to manipulate, scare, and guilt trip women into keeping unwanted pregnancies. So, in other words, we're not saying it's not accurate. We're just saying we can't use it because for political reasons. Um, but she said, I did, I did experience something more than a set of cells forming within me and something different, but something different from the baby. The closest I can describe it is that I sensed a spiritual being coming into existence. It wasn't scary and it wasn't sad. It, would, it just was. And on some level, during those two weeks of waiting for her abortion, mm -hmm. I did my best to let that spiritual being know that it was deeply loved by the universe, but it was not going to be born. That's sad. Is that, how hard is your heart? Very hard. How cold-blooded and black-hearted are you if yeah. you can do this? Right. Or how whacked out are you? Today, she says, what she's wanting is for the... Um, Jewish com community to create a public ri ritual to honor abortions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She says she cries every year during the Yitzkor service on Yom Kippur when they mourn lost children. Her tears, she says, are for a connection that I chose to end. Someday, she says, she hopes the Jewish community will cre create a public ritual, ritual to honor abortion. You can't tell me. And she says that she's not scarred, but she is. She is deeply scarred because of this. She is. She just black. hasn't gotten in touch with her, her true emotions here. She is screwed up. Now, <clears throat> I need to vent for a minute. So you're just going to have to put up with it. Okay. I listen to you vent all the time. I know. Well, let's go. Let's go. I'm hot about some stuff. First off, the situation that happened down in Orlando with the, the, this Islamic terrorist going in mm -hmm. and shooting up this gay nightclub and killing 49 people and win, win, winning 53 others. First off, some on the godless left are saying this is a result of Christians' yes. views on abortion. The nerve. Now, now, let me ask you this question. There are hundreds of Christian churches close to where this nightclub is. How come none of them were joining in on this shooting spree? Right, right. Because well, we have nothing to do with it. This is a totally separate act. This, this is obscene. But here's the bigger obscenity. When the FBI released the tapes that they made, that the police made over the phone with this guy while this was going on, they edited out all references to Islam, to ISIS, to his loyalty to ISIS. They took that loyalty oath that he says he took. Mm -hmm. They took that out. No reference to Islamic terrorists, nothing. They took it completely out. Why did they do that? Now, here, let's remember that 24 hours later, they backtrack on it because they got a, they got a ton of blowback on this. Mm -hmm. Right. But why did they do it to begin with? That's the question. What kind of mindset says, here's this guy that did this, mm -hmm. 
He's telling us the reasons that he did this, mm -hmm. but because we've got a political agenda, mm -hmm. we're going to leave out the reasons intentionally. We're not only going to uh, not give people the whole tape. We're going to give them the tape, but we're going to take out the reasons. Yeah. Any references? Why did they do that to begin with? We're not protected. The United States is not protected under the president that we have. You've hit the nail on the head as far as what the problem is. The problem is that, and I know people, my wife believes that, has always believed that, that Obama is, is a Muslim himself. I've never bought into that. But there's more and more evidence that this guy, if he's not a Muslim, if he's not an Islamic, he is at least an Islamic sympathizer. Mm -hmm. There's, that's the only way you can describe this man's right. actions. Right. And if we can survive the next six months until we get somebody else in the office, Oval Office, and we don't want to get into that discussion about where we're headed. Right. Our country's in deep, deep trouble here. Yes. Deep trouble. Yeah. It will take 100 years to undo the damage that Barack Obama has done. Mm -hmm. This man is thoroughly evil. I'm not to the point now where I'm willing to say that he's a Muslim, but I know for a fact he's not a Christian. That much we can tell. Right. We can tell him by his fruits. Right. We know what he. We know what he's not. Now what he is, we don't know. Yeah. He's probably a nothing. Has always been my view. Right. But at, at bare minimum, he's an Islamic sympathizer. At bare minimum, that's what he is. Now, let me ask you something else. And while I'm doing this venting issue here, Rennie. Okay. The national media has gone into a complete and utter meltdown over the situation. And they're blaming Christians, and they're blaming homophobia, and they're blaming all these other things. Not Islamic homophobia, mm -hmm. which they execute people for just saying they're homosexual, mm -hmm. right? Social media has gone nuts. They've you don't even want to get on social media right now because of right. what's going on. But the godless left is trying to blame everybody except the person who did it and the, and the reason for the person who did it. But let me ask you this question. Let's say that instead of this being done at a gay nightclub, that somebody had walked into a crisis pregnancy center banquet mm -hmm. and did exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Would these people be, would they be all wrapped around the axle about that like they are about this? No, they wouldn't. And they'd be blaming it on the pro-lifers and saying, well, it's your rhetoric that caused this. Right. You created this hatred. You, you pushed created... us to do it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, this guy shouldn't have gone in there and shot all you guys, but, you know, you, you kind of called it upon yourself. Yeah. You know, you kind of brought it on yourself. Right. Um, that would have been the media's, if they covered it at all, my thinking is it would probably have been covered on the news that night because they couldn't ignore it. Mm -hmm. And by the next day at noon, it, it would have been, been done over, done it, and over with. Yeah, it had been over with. Right. But even if they had covered it, I mm -hmm. guarantee you 100% the godless left mm -hmm. and the godless media, which are in cahoots, mm -hmm. would have blamed this on the people who were shot and killed. Mm -hmm. That's who they'd have yeah. blamed it on. Right. Well, I mean, it's just like the sidewalk counselors. It's the people that hold the signs. It's right. We brought it on to ourselves, and, right. and we're at fault. Right. Exactly. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week. Until next time, remember, Life Dynamics is not here to put up a good fight. We're here to win because winning is how the killing stops. We'll see you next week.